What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and today we're going to talk about how to fake it in an orchestral situation on double bass. Look, obviously we don't want to be faking our way through life, but there are times and places where faking is an important skill, and if you reframe it, it's maybe not even faking, it's kind of like doing what you can. This was suggested by a viewer, and it can be an incredibly helpful skill once you've developed it, so let's dive in. The piece that Vince mentioned is actually Sibelius' first symphony, and it's a great example of a piece where a lot of it might be beyond your skill level, certainly beyond my skill level when I'm just pulling it out and sight reading it for the first time, so let's use that and see how to fake our way, fake or adapt or whatever word you want to use in this piece. Okay, so we'll just look at an overview of the piece and just sort of see red flags and things that we're going to have some issues with. If it's whole notes, probably okay. So we've got some runs at B. This is fairly fast, so we'll definitely want to figure out how to do those and possibly fake those. Uh, then we've got the tempo one again, a bunch of eighth notes here at the bottom of this page. Lots of runs up and down the bass, lots of chromatic. Yeah, oh yeah, I forgot about this piece. Yeah, there's a lot in here. Andante usually means probably more doable, not always, but uh, this is more doable. Got some notes here in the second movement. And okay, scherzo, third movement. Look at all these runs. That's probably what Vince was most interested in learning how to fake. Finale, lots of runs. Okay, we got, oh, okay, yeah, there we go. And in this finale, all this stuff down here. Yeah, Sibelius had a high opinion of bass sections, which is cool, but there's a lot in everything of his. Okay, so my first bit of advice is to think long term when you're figuring out how to fake or adapt a piece of orchestra music so that you can play something. And by that, I mean solve your problems at a slow tempo. You can slow just about anything down slow enough that you can play it once you're at a certain skill level. Figuring out how to actually get through passages and sort of get them under your fingers, even if they're just glacially slow, that is such an important skill, and you'll find that if you solve problems and issues at a slow tempo, you will frequently be able to move that tempo up faster than you realize. Simplifying the part is what you want to figure out. How can you simplify this music to make it something that you can do no matter where you're at? And I've had a lot of adult students that really struggle with this because they want to play all the notes. If you can play something but at a slow tempo, that's great, but when it actually comes to the rehearsal and push comes to shove in the performance, you're going to have to figure out how to do something in tempo. And just figuring out the shapes of licks, I think it'd be very helpful. So if we look at this first movement at letter B, we have this... Um, now, let's say that's a little too fast for you. We can just sort of remember that we're going from here to there. So simplifying the part would be one option. You could go like one, two, three, four, five, six, something like that. And you could, if you're using an iPad like I am, you could just circle the notes that you're going to play. And over time, you could maybe add more notes. Uh, you could then go like a one, two, three. At the same time, in your practice sessions, you can actually be playing the notes, but at a slower tempo. So like one, two, three. And really just scanning your body to make sure that you're staying nice and relaxed. That's often the key to learning faster passages is understanding how you can unlock what needs to be unlocked in order to play successfully. The same is true for all these double notes. You can just go through and play single notes. <laughs> And then practice them double, but maybe slower. I would rather hear someone play with good tone way under tempo or good tone simplified like I just did rather than trying to like scrape and scratch your way through something. Again, for all of these licks, just kind of figuring out, okay, where do I start if we're down here by letter P and we're going to here? And then let's just understand the gesture. What have we got? Well, we've got... Just a chromatic scale. Okay, so that's good. And then, uh, again, depending on tempo, you might be able to just do it once you understand and find the pattern. Finding patterns in music is key, and then doing what you can in the pattern is also critical. The next thing to realize, and this is a hard realization, but it's so critical, is that rhythm is key. 
doing things in rhythm with the group, doing what you can in rhythm. If you're late to the party and don't hop on the rhythm train with everybody else, bad. If you could just do a couple things in time, that's great. So going through it and just counting through the part is helpful. One, two, three, four, five, six, one. And then again, under tempo, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. You can play along with the recording and slow it down using various methods, YouTube and otherwise. And you just want to make sure that you're playing in time with the rest of the orchestra, even if you're not playing all the right notes or all the notes. This next one's kind of a sneaky one, but you can use bowing techniques to give the impression that you're playing all the notes. And this is kind of the beautiful thing about bass is our instrument has a little bit more of a diffuse sound. And so when I get into really fast passages, uh, I am, have been known many times to this day to sort of... Uh and so let's just apply that to Sibelius. We can go down and look at some of these real, real fun things that like a letter C. Okay, so we know we have to go through it. It's a 104, so one and two and three and one and two and three and one. Okay, so let's just get that rhythm into our body. So maybe we could just do simple scales, sex tablets. And then maybe start on the and, since that's what's happening at C, it's like. And then if you look at the gesture, we're just not even thinking about the notes right now. It's And that's the musical effect we want. And even if we're not getting all the notes, kind of getting something like that, like. And maybe picking a couple notes to land on. I know that seems like a dirty trick, <laughs> but you will be surprised how often you can fit in with what's going on, just making a glorious kind of vaguely pitched sound. Again, this is not optimal, but we're talking about faking it or managing our way through something. And over time, you can learn just about anything, but some of these things will take more time than you have, particularly if you're newer to the bass or you're an adult amateur and the concert's coming up in three weeks and you see all these notes and you freak out. I tell everybody when I work with them uh, in, then they're in that kind of situation, just learn the notes way slow and then come up with strategies to get through the concert. That's what we're doing here and using these sort of bowing techniques is super helpful. And it's not rocket science. It's like find the starting note, find the high point, just find some goal notes and then uh, kind of... Uh, <laughs> Just kind of know that this is, a, I'm at letter P here, this G, this F, this E. So if I think of... And finally, it's just all about practice, putting in the repetitions, intentional, focused practice, really trying to deliberately solve things in your playing. And a lot of people tend to think, I need to learn all the notes and all the rhythms, and then I'll start thinking about the musicality and the gestures. But I have found, and so many others, that if you are thinking music from the get-go and the gesture, you'd be amazed at how quickly the notes will Come. At the same time, solving things in a deliberate, slow, incrementally notching up the tempo, te that's a tried and true technique. And if you want to learn more about that, check out what we've got linked up here. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next one.